Welcome to the Buck Stops here, the official podcast of NottonHallofame.com, and I'm your host, Kirk Buckner, aka The Buck, the owner and operator of NottonHallofame.com and its sister sites, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame and the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Social media is one of those fun things. Sometimes it can be pretty bad, but uh, with social media, you can find a lot of like-minded individuals, and I had the privilege of chatting with a gentleman named Alex Voltaire, a professor now in Singapore who has written a lot of interesting things about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and through his blog, he has put together a dream scenario for the next seven Rock and Roll Hall of Fame classes. It's actually very, very fascinating to read. I'll be plugging that a little bit later on the show, and I certainly encourage everyone to sort of take a look at it. Uh, like myself, uh, Alex sort of like takes more uh, conscientious approach. Uh, one thing I've always sort of disliked with a lot of people uh, who are cr- critics of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is that we'll always say it's a joke that such and such is not in. Uh, Alex doesn't take that approach, he just sort of like wants to make it fun and sort of takes a more cognitive approach to it and what he's laid out is probably something better than anything that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame would actually come up with. If they actually listen to him, it would be must-watch television. Not that it's not close to that now, but this would be pretty good. Without further ado, here is Alex from Singapore. Alex, it's fine. It's uh, really nice to make your acquaintance. Ah, uh, yeah, great to uh, talk with you, Kirk. It's one of the great things about social media. Sometimes you meet some really good people, and uh, you're going to be doing another show with Evan Nolan out of Chicago, and you're you're in Singapore. Which is just fascinating to me. Uh, I am. Yeah, beautiful country. I've had the chance to go there a couple times. And I'm actually very envious. Mm-hmm. I, it would be a place I would love to sort of go next. But I don't see that happening. Until then, I'll just have to settle for the sunny Barbados and the Caribbean. Oh, woe is me. So th- yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> World's tiniest violin. And so the reason I'm having you on is... Uh, We sort of exchanged a few messages on Twitter. Uh, I've seen your blog, and one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about today is you've outlined how you would see the next five Rock and Roll Hall of Fames going. And before we go into that, uh, how did you become interested in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah, um, honestly, uh, I'm embarrassed to say this now. Um, I was originally... um, uh, I guess um, maybe attracted is the wrong word, but but certainly interested because I, I felt this deep grievance that Chicago uh, was not in. This mm-hmm. was many years ago uh, before they were inducted, and I was uh, I was a huge huge Chicago fan. I realize it's something uh, of a guilty pleasure um, now, but I was I was struck at how such a successful band couldn't make it, and um, I I kind of dug into a site that uh, I'm sure is well known to you, Future Rock. Legend. Yep, future rock legends, and absolutely. Started, um, yeah, and and diving into um, more of the history of the institution, how it operates, um, how it's structured, and just kind of fell down that rabbit hole. And uh, it, it was fun to be able to approach it uh, as more than just a music fan, uh, but as a historian uh, as well, and um, take a look at, at the underlying structures and changes uh, mm. through that lens. Yeah, and that's that's kind of how this actually our whole site started. Initially, uh, it started actually in a when I was drinking in a bar, which is a big shock for anyone who knows me. And uh, Madonna just got <laughs> in. Yeah, and Madonna just got in, and people were just saying, "That's not rock. That's not rock." And as I'm sure they say, well, I know they say for every time a rapper gets in, so they're going to be really disappointed every year because <laughs> a rapper is always going to go in, as I think many times they should. I uh, just want to put that out there. And so that just sort of led me to sort of like right. look into who wasn't in. And at that time, and I, Chicago was actually someone who I put on the list initially, I believe in the top 20. And there was a lot of huge emissions, uh, Kiss, Rush, uh, that just boggled yep. my mind. Uh, Kiss, as I got to do some a lot yeah, of the history. Deep Purple, Cheap Deep Trick. Purple, yeah. Cheap Trick. Uh, who's some of the others that just seemed to have waited forever. Uh Judas Priest was one, still is, Iron Maiden, Motorhead, all of these groups. And not only were they not inducted, in many cases, as same with Chicago, they weren't even nominated. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and it sort of set me on this, uh, much like I said, this rabbit hole, just learning as much as I could, and then just trying to define what rock and roll music mm-hmm. is. And 
there's not even since there's not one universal definition, I really didn't have a whole lot of problem with a lot of these so-called pop acts or R and B or rap, hip hop, whatever you want to call it, getting in because rock and roll. If rock and roll is an attitude, which I believe it is, then all of them belong. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so when I looked at your blog, you've laid out, uh, and it's impressive, and I definitely want you to plug that at the end because I think everyone should just take a look at a lot of what you've written. You've laid out sort of the next five uh, years and, or seven years, actually, sorry, uh, next seven years. And it's not, and I think, uh, which I do want to point out, it's not based on what you necessarily think, it's what you think they're going to do, or not what you want, sorry. Uh, because I imagine if it's what you wanted and you did lay this out, it'd be completely different. Yeah, that's very true. Just to name one example, um, for me, uh, maybe the biggest snub outside of craft work uh, as a performer is Carol King. Um, right. She's in as a songwriter, of course, uh, with her husband, uh, Jerry Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at the number of songwriters, particularly uh, singer songwriters who are women, um, and the influence of King, and especially the album Tapestry, uh, stand out. Mm-hmm. But I just couldn't see the hall putting her in uh, a second time. They've had all these years to do it. Um, and it, my guess is that if they put her on the ballot, she'd go in um, instantly, first try. Um, but um, I, I just didn't see it happening. So it was very much uh, what I called a kind of best-case scenario, mm-hmm. um, trying to get probability uh, with uh, what at least I would consider to be uh, a generally uh, good or, or salutary outcome. And the one other thing I too I like about how you've laid this out, you're not just predicting uh, what they're who they're going to select. You've got you're predicting who's mm-hmm. going to induct them, uh, what the songs they're going to play. You've got this laid out perfectly so well that you've given them a blueprint as to what they should do because whatever they come up with, it won't be as good as this. Well, I, I really appreciate your saying that, and um, part of that comes from an awareness of um, the the induction ceremony as uh, a public spectacle uh, in a way that it wasn't a handful of years ago. Um, and I think uh, being able to um, broadcast this on HBO has been a game changer, um, just because uh, it, it, it needs to make bank. Um, in earlier years, the ceremonies were were certainly filmed and, uh, if I remember correctly, broadcast on VH1. Uh, But these were relatively uh, small, insular, inside baseball affairs. They were at the Waldorf Astoria. Um, uh, You know, um, people would just kind of show up drunk to the ceremony. Um, Poor poor Paul McCartney is, you know, recently um, a a widower and just shows up sloshed at his own induction. And... Um, that probably would not fly on, on HBO today. So all these considerations come into play. Who's going to make for good television, not only in terms of who's inducted, but who shows up to give the speeches, guest performances. Um, there's a lot of pressure for the actual induction ceremony um, to be something that it wasn't um, in, in earlier years, and I tried to make my choices reflect that. Right, because now you've got to actually sell a product, whereas before you didn't have to. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that that's sort of a reflective, and I'm, I'm going to segue here because it's, it's something that's sort of fresh on my mind, because uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame is going to be announcing their finalists. Uh, Kobe Bryant will definitely be one of them. Uh, he, well, actually, no, they already said that, that he's going to like walk in like, like that wasn't any doubt. And we, sometimes we have to remember this is a business. They changed the rule two yeah. years ago. Uh, so that it would be fi- so that it would reduce from five years to three years, uh, basically, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that they need money because they do because they're renovating the whole the whole building. Oh, I'm sure. Now, wasn't it wasn't it something like ten years bef- before that? Uh, actually, it was six years before, and then w- what they did in clearly a way that they it showed me that they sort of like needed some influx of cash at that point. They change it from six years to five years. They made mm-hmm. that announcement one month before mm-hmm. they announced the finalists. I, I remember this because I had to scramble and, re, and rework uh, the basketball list. And who's on that? Who, who becomes eligible? Right. Shaquille O'Neal. Because Shaq will sell tickets. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Webber, who I think should have been long ago, in long ago, won't. 
And that's just the sad reality of that. And I think that idea reflects in this, because if you've got somebody, and you mentioned craft work before, craft work is someone I will I will pound the hammer that they should have been in a long time ago. The craft work won't <clears throat> craft work will not oh, sell yeah. tickets. It won't bring eyeballs, especially in the United States. It just doesn't. <clears throat> Yeah, and that, that's the unfortunate element in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, so you, you have these larger, bigger NBA spectacles, and, and no doubt, people like Kobe, uh, Tim Duncan, uh, Kevin Garnett should absolutely all uh, be in immediately. But it, there's a certain sadness uh, that, that some good older players are, are left out of that uh, calculus. I was just going through your list uh, for basketball uh, before our interview, and mm-hmm. and uh, you mentioned Chris Webber. Yes. Um, Terrific player, great college player. Uh, someone like Chauncey Billups, uh, best player on championship team. Um, uh, I was delighted when someone like Sidney Moncrief uh, yes. finally got in uh, last year. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, is, uh, it is unfortunate because um, I, I'm glad that this new form of presentation attracts people who might otherwise not have paid very much attention. Uh, but on the other hand, I see these halls of fame of, as having a mission to educate as well. Um, and your ability to learn about the history and the breadth uh, and the significance uh, and the diversity of rock and roll or, or professional basketball uh, it, it is sometimes lost in that shift. Just to give a small example, um, so for the 20, uh, I guess, 15 induction ceremony, I was, um, I railed against uh, the Paul Butterfield blues band. I thought it was a, a Jan Wenner pick. I thought it was inside baseball. I thought it was elitism. Um, and it was watching the ceremony that changed my mind. They made an excellent presentation. Um, they performed very well. They made a case for their historicity. Uh, or as I had just assumed, because I wasn't familiar with the band, that they might not be very good, or they didn't matter. Uh, so it would be nice to see these Halls of Fame make that shift. Uh, and, and for the case of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame especially, maybe use these ancillary categories like early influence or uh, um, the Erdogan Award for non-performers to, mm-hmm. to teach people a little bit uh, more about the history of, of this genre. Right. And, and that's something that you just, you never know when, it, when they're going to actually bring that out, ever. And you've actually laid this yeah. out too, how you can see some of these, this going. So actually, let's just go right into it. So your 2021, uh, I think, is, is pretty, pretty apparent. You've got two, pe- two, group, two people who are going to be nominated, or one band, one rapper, will be eligible for the first time. Uh, mm-hmm. The Foo Fighters, and I love your, induct- your inductor, uh, John Paul Jones. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, And and I mean, (laughs) who couldn't induct the Foo Fighters? I mean, Dave Grohl is maybe uh, the single most well-liked person um, in, in, if not rock and roll, possibly all of popular music at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're a lock. I've got to say, when, when, after Kurt Cobain died, if you would have laid out this career path for Dave Grohl, I would have said you're nuts. I never would have saw this coming. Mm -hmm. He was just a smile. Well, I mean, obviously a very competent drummer, but... I had no idea the, the breadth of musical talent that that man had. No idea. Uh, you, mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you've, also, yeah, and you've also got Jay-Z in, and I think that's about as, I think that's a bigger lock than the Foo Fighters, frankly. Uh, inducted by Danny Glover. Uh, what yeah. I, uh, why, why do you have, why do you foresee that one? With, with, with Glover. Um, I, I'm really fascinated by, um, by these scenarios when non-musicians induct mm-hmm someone in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, I think personally maybe the best induction speech I've heard in the last handful of ceremonies was David Letterman's uh, for Pearl Jam. Mm-hmm. It was thoughtful. It was heartfelt. Um, so uh, truthfully, I don't remember quite why I chose Danny Glover. At, at um, There was a connection between the two. I, uh, um, uh, I can get back to you on that, but I quite honestly forgot what it was. Hopefully he's not getting too old for this yet. But I'm bum. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I, I can't. I can't resist horrible jokes. Uh, ask my wife how well that's going for me. No. Uh, the Go Go's. I would love to see that because <laughs> uh, if if they do actually want to con- want to solve the problem that they 
that some people think they have, I, I would disagree that they don't have that, of female equity. Well, you put in five women mm-hmm. right there. And yeah. Billy Joe Armstrong, um, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, the go-go's, yeah. yeah, no, there's a lot of respect um, between those, those, those two. And, and, and the go-go's have that um, kind of radio friendly punk thing uh, going as well. I'd love to see the go-go's they're having a year. They're having a moment um, with, between documentaries. I think there's a musical in the pipeline um, in the same way that the Straight Outta Compton movie um, paved the way for an NWA induction. I think we'll see something similar for the Go-Go's. Yeah, and I would I would certainly love to see it. And just the other, like a couple weeks ago, I finally found found it online. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains, if you ever saw that. No, I haven't. Okay, so it's, ba- it's a Diane Lane movie. Uh, I don't even remember if... Uh, <laughs> if that was even released. I'm, I'm trying to remember the whole story on that, but I, I found, I finally found it cause I kept hearing about this and it was this, the stains were a punk band and they didn't really have a whole lot of talent, but at the end of it, uh, they essentially morphed into, cause it, then the seventies blood into the eighties and then the montage and the end credits, uh, they're, they're decked out like the go-go's. So it kind of, mm-hmm. and oh, wow. which the go-go's at the, were a punk band before. So I just thought, okay, like, I, I couldn't help but play the Go-Go's after that and try to find as much stuff before that, before Belinda Carl's, Carlisle became, you know, heaven on earth, Belinda Carlisle, but still. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. another, another one here I love here, you've got early influence, Big Mama Thornton, inducted by Brittany Howard and performed yeah. by Brittany Howard and Lizzo, and I, who couldn't do, that? There, you couldn't come up with a better one of that, doing Hound Dog, and uh, if anyone who has not heard that version of Hound Dog, because I think, like myself, a lot of people probably heard Elvis doing that first, you can never hear Elvis sing that again after you hear mm-hmm. the original. You can't. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I am I am shocked Big Mama Thornton has, has never uh, been nominated, hasn't been considered for early influence. I mean, my God, you, you, you've got this... Um, this brassy, confident uh, woman who plays harmonica and the drums um, doing a, a Lieber and Stoller song in, in 1953 or 54. How, how, how does that not get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? She, she does Ball and Chain, uh, uh, which in turn got further popularized by Janis Joplin. Um, I mean, if you're going to do another early influence, I, as, I, I'm delighted Sister Rosetta Tharp got in mm-hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, but, um, but Big Mama Thornton has to be next. Yeah, and that sort of showcases another problem that sometimes I have. Uh, when, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, when Tharp was uh, nominated, then I guess she wasn't chosen, so they just mm-hmm. crowbarred her then into the early influence, which is kind of where she should be in the first place. Uh, and that's the only reason why right now Big Mama Thornton yeah. is not ranked, because... I don't rank the early influence because, frankly, I never know when it's going to happen. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Right. And that's the other thing because um, these, uh, in, in that movement toward, toward spectacle and showmanship, um, a lot of these other categories get pushed to the side. Um, I mean, I, I, if, if the hall were run um, as I would wish it to be run, uh, I'd love to see uh, some kind of early influence inducted every year, uh, whether there's a performance or not, or whether you get a big name or not. We've, we've hardly scratched uh, the surface with that. The Carter family uh, might be in. I mean, um, uh, Ivory Joe Hunter should be in. All, all these different acts um, that are part of this larger uh, narrative. Mm-hmm. And you've got one here also. Uh, so rounding this out, Jethro Till, never been nominated. Never, which is yep. one of the biggest shocks to me. Yep. Inducted by Nick Cave, I love that. Uh, Duran Duran, inducted by Gwen Stefani. Uh, an underappreciated mm-hmm. va- band, I've always thought. This one I found really interesting, and that might be uh, uh, Dolly Parton. Uh, Dolly certainly has a lot of crossover yep. appeal. Uh, her and Kenny Rogers, I think people don't understand just how big country pop was in the 1980s and how big those two people were. Uh, Dolly, <laughs> especially because she just sort of kept her name up and as, and more of, as a female icon. And is that sort of like where you see her getting in because of female empowerments? Because a lot of her songs have, have all these other layers to it that I'm, I'm just kind of really understanding now. 
as I'm trying to force myself to get into a lot of mm-hmm. old country, that is not something I grew up really enjoying, uh, country music. Uh, you know, just, you're young, you rebel against other stuff, and now I, all I do is listen to music that's old, that's as old as my dad. Go figure. Because <laughs> I'm trying to understand yeah, where all absolutely. the music came um, from. And, and Exactly. And uh, for someone like Dolly Parton, um, I mean, it, it's always a tricky issue on drawing these arbitrary lines between what is and is not rock and roll. Mm. And a lot of our received knowledge and the way a lot of us instinctually view it, uh, it is based on, on, on formatting, essentially. We're all kind of beholden to an understanding of rock and roll that was, I, I guess, curated by the rise of album-oriented rock um, in the 70s as a distinct radio genre that made it possible to argue, um, just, just for example, that Jethro Tull is rock and roll, but uh, let's say the Spinners or the Commodores uh, are not. So um, in cases of exceptional figures who influence rock and roll while perhaps not being part of the genre itself, Miles Davis would be another name uh, I, I would consider in that category. Uh, someone else I'd love to see, Willie Nelson, would be another. But uh, in terms of collaborating with rock and roll musicians, in terms of um, really in a lot of ways uh, influencing or I think a lot of the, the, the heartbeat of, of, of rock and roll is, is now the genre of Americana. Um, yeah, I'd love to see Dolly Parton get in. And if you want to talk about attracting viewers to an HBO special, it's hard to think of someone who would draw more names than Dolly Parton. That's true. I never really thought of it that way, but she, she definitely would. She's still relevant. Although I hate using that word relevant. I mean, because that's always used as a slur against someone older. Like, oh, you, you don't know... You're not relevant anymore. Like, ah, come on, stop that. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, yeah. I want to move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And I want to move on to your 2002. Uh, I love this because uh, you've got this going to LA. Is that is that been announced or is that something you're pro- projecting? Oh no, it's just a wish. Uh, as far as I know, 2022 will be in Cleveland again. Okay. Um, but uh, one of the conceits I did in designing this was moving the ceremony around. I realize the Rock Hall is probably contractually obligated at this point to hold it in Cleveland in certain years and New York in certain years. But if we were to just imagine something else, I'd love to see the ceremony move between cities. What a great way to introduce um, the history of each of these places in in the unfolding rock and roll story. Uh, You know, maybe let the choice of city influence what you do for the jam at the end. Um, maybe get a city-specific MC. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd love to see it go back to L.A. I don't think they've held it there since, um, let's see here, the 2013 uh, ceremony uh, with, with Randy Newman and I Love L.A. But I'd love to see it go back there. And, and that would be a great way to sort of like really showcase everything that the United States has brought to the music scene because it's so different. Atlanta with everything that they're doing now because it wasn't necessarily a big, big scene before. New Orleans, <laughs> uh, Chicago... L.A., New York, Seattle, and there's probably like 20 more viable ones if I really sat and thought about it. Memphis, Detroit, I don't know, like I need to but do you're another right. list. Atlanta is one of those cities that their significance kind of came to light later on between uh, something like Outcast on one uh, end of the spectrum and, and album-oriented uh, college rock um, on the other well, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, REM, the B-52s. Uh, so I love how you've got this. You've got Cher in this. Uh, Cher inducted in 2022. And you've got it. She insists on, on doing an opening and closing the show, singing Turn Back, to, Turn Back Time. <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> like, why not, indeed? And But for her inductions... Yeah, I mean, Cher is the only person with an ego big enough to, to insist on that. And you know what? Let her have it. I mean, when, when the apocalypse comes... The only surviving things are going to be Twinkies and cockroaches and Cher. Every, everyone else is a goner. You left out Keith Richards. You're right. You're right. Keith Richards might also make it. I, I, I think he's... I had him... I think I, t- I take, took him in every Deadpool in the 80s. He's still alive. I don't know how he managed this. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your inductors here, and it makes perfect sense. Uh, inducted by Elton John and Bette Midler. And, in, and you've got him... You got her singing "I Got You, Babe" with Jazz Bono. Can he sing? I, I don't even know. 
Um, you know, does it really matter? No. I mean, was, was Sonny <laughs> Bono the best singer? Perhaps not. Um, even even if, if, if Chaz is uh, at best a mediocre singer, I think at the moment it would be a, a showstopper, not a dry eye in the house. Mm-hmm. Great, uh, not a bad actor. Uh, saw him uh, do put in a good performance in American Horror Story, not that long ago. Mm-hmm. It was actually very good. So uh, you've also uh, the other other f- main headlining female, Pat Benatar, inducted by Melissa Etheridge. I thought it, Pat mm-hmm. was a lock last year. I, I'm that's the biggest shock to me is yep. that she did not get in. I I don't know why, but I'm sure it's I'm sure that's going to happen sooner than later, and I'm sure the, a lot of people are clamoring for that. Outcast, inducted by George Clinton. Can definitely see that. And this is where you bring up Letterman again, because this one is perfect. David Letterman inducting Warren Zevon. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, all of Zevon's um, performances on his show, uh, even when I think Letterman inducted Pearl Jam, he uh, evinced a wish that um, Warren Zevon would eventually get in. And and, and, and the Robin to, to Letterman's Batman, Paul Schaefer, is on the committee. So he's in a position to actually make it happen. And that would be incredible. Uh, Eminem, uh, who I think is a lock in that year, inducted mm-hmm. by Chance the Rapper, which I like that. Uh, yeah. the, the Erdogan Award to Bernie Taupin. Actually, it's one of those surprises that, that he hasn't been inducted yet. Uh, the Rhythmics. Inducted by Florence Welch. That makes perfect sense. And I think so. I mean, uh, if you look at the mantle of, of um, kind of experimental, synth-driven, but, but, but uh, soul-infused music, Florence and the Machine are absolutely the Eurythmics uh, heirs in that sense. And the Musical Excellence Award, and a great way to sort of induct someone who is worthy, but you're not sure how, how to get him in there, Willie Nelson, but inducted by Beto O'Rourke? That one I couldn't figure out. What am I missing on that? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's mostly um, kind of uh, farm aid activism. I mean, Nelson's uh, fairly progressive in his politics. I, I didn't want to politicize the ceremony uh, too much. But um, but the great thing is that even if O'Rourke couldn't or shouldn't do it, I mean, uh, there's dozens of people who could, mm-hmm. who could nominate uh, or rather induct Willie Nelson. Oh, for sure. Of course, if the ceremony was held in Iowa, then he couldn't make it there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ouch. Hey, it was there. I'm, wa- I'm. It's amazing what I'm obsessed with. My wife will say, "How can I? I can watch so much sports and so much politics at the same, like often at the same mm-hmm. time." Uh, and I should have mentioned mm-hmm. too, because you've actually even figured out the whole jam too. You got California Dream and bringing out Wilson Phillips, which will probably be the closest that mm-hmm. they'll ever make the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but. <laughs> It would be nice. Uh, probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So 2023, back to Cleveland. Uh, one of the, the most, in my opinion, underappreciated bands of all time, the B-52s. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, I'm really hoping to see them get in or at least nominated. Uh, they, they might be like the Eurythmics where they might come close one year but not quite make it. But B-52s, great uh, new wave band. Um uh, I mean, fascinatingly, um, they, they just did a crossover with Archie Comics uh, the past couple months. Oh, Archie did they? meets the B-52s. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't think that'll affect their rock call chances in any way. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a great kind of uh, callback to those kind of campy uh, 60s and 70s um, uh, so-and-so meets the monkeys kind of comics. Reminds me, I sort of fell down another rabbit hole watching Kiss meets uh, Scooby Doo or something like that, and it was <laughs> yes, yeah, Chris. and yeah, uh, yes. Uh, what was it? Uh, they're they're all on a flying guitar, and I was trying to think like, wait a minute, I, I know I don't do drugs anymore. What the hell am I watching? <laughs> so, exactly, and I couldn't turn my turn my head. Uh, Weezer uh, inducted by Kermit and Fozzie, and why the hell not? Why the hell not? They were in their music video. Um, I'm surprised we haven't had a Muppets uh, Rock Hall induction at this point. Well, they are in the fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They did make it to that one I created. That's, Doc- that's very true. That's very true. I mean, the Rainbow Connection, uh, the uh, Electric Mayhem. Yeah, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. 
sort of mm-hmm. and sort of amazing how many women I've actually dated in the past who had who bear a striking resemblance to Janice, which is weird because they're all. Yo, Asian. I get it. Jan- but that's a <laughs> Janice story. is a type. I, I totally get it. Mm-hmm. You and you've actually. So yeah, been, Weezer. I was a little. Yeah. Surprised. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. I, actually, yeah, Weezer is. I think you were going to say that you were really surprised, and I guess you were going to say that they're not in already. Mm-hmm. They were nominated. I mean, I think they were eligible for the first yes. time uh, this past year. And if you think of, of longevity, if you think of um, kind of uh, alternative bands that made the mainstream and endured, I mean, they had a number one hit uh, with, with their cover of Africa, I think, fairly recently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little surprised Weezer didn't get in. I, I know that Rivers Cuomo and, and the others are, are in the good graces of a lot of rock hall people and, and the industry. But, um, soon, I hope. Yeah, and I'm sure it would be. Uh, Devo inducted by Weird Al. Mm-hmm. That would be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. This would actually be probably the most fun award ceremony ever, just with these three, and you could stop right there. <laughs> but I'd love to see it. I mean, getting Yoko Ono to do a speech for the Oh, that's B-52s. right, yeah, because you have you have inducted by Yoko Ono for the B-52s. I forgot to mention that. Uh, although, I don't want to see Yoko perform. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. Um, but there's this apocryphal story that um, while, while he was out sailing in the Caribbean a few months before he died, John Lennon heard um, uh, the B-52s play in one of the clubs on one of the islands, and he gets to a payphone and calls Yoko and, and says, you finally made it. There are artists out there achieving success who, who were riffing on and, and borrowing from your sound. So uh, if Yoko's still alive, she's in her late 80s now. Uh, I think she'd be a fine choice for the B-52s. I wonder if she... Okay, she is... Is she... Uh, I'm trying to think if she's attended some of the ceremonies. She must have. Um, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she has. My, my, I vaguely remember her being there for Ringo's induction uh, five years ago, but uh, I, I couldn't swear by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ringo, the only one of the Beatles who understand that understood that as a rock star, you're supposed to like marry hot women. Yes, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounded really sexist, but hey, that's kind of what they no, all do. No, it's okay. I mean, George Harrison didn't do uh, too badly for himself either, but um, but, but point taken. Yeah, uh, Dave Matthews Band. I thought they were going to get in this year, inducted by John Mayer. That's a lot of logic there, and it's sort of a good uh, counterpoint to the previous three bands. Uh, LL Cool J inducted by Daryl McDaniels. Love it. What do you think he hasn't gotten in yet? Because he's been nominated, he, I believe, is it three times now he's made it to the finals? Uh, I, it may be more than that, four or five. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but, but let me make, you, you talked about uh, a love of politics. Let's go deep into political history mm-hmm. uh, and talk about Henry Clay for a second. It, it sounds off topic, but I swear no. I have a point. Go ahead. Um, and, and Henry Clay made a comment towards the end of his career that he was always nominated when it was sure that he would lose by, by his party, the Whig Party, and never nominated when it was certain that he would win. And I feel like LL Cool J is in the same scenario. If there isn't an obvious rap inductee a given year, they always nominate LL Cool J. You'll notice when they really wanted Biggie to get in this year, they didn't induct LL Cool J. When they really wanted NWA to show up or Tupac to show up, um, and not show up, but, but, but to get in, um, LL Cool J wasn't nominated. He, he sort of become the default um, rap nominee if there's no one else to get in. And, and that may contribute to him just falling short every year. It's a shame. I'd love to see. I mean, if you've made the leap to saying rap has a place and hip hop has a place, uh, he, he's the first significant solo rapper. Um, incredible longevity. Uh, uh, the only difficulty is that, I mean, in the fullness of time, he, he um, if not exactly sold out, he became mainstream. He lost a lot of, uh, you know, the street in his acting career. Um, Whereas, uh, you know, Tupac died young and dangerous, as did Biggie. Death is a great way to, be, to make your music more relevant. You're using that word again, but it's sad, but very, very true. Uh, Musical Excellence Award. <clears throat> and here's some, a group I never even thought of, and it makes perfect sense. Musical Excellence Award to The Revolution. 
Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's free good publicity falling from the sky. Have Questlove induct them? Um, I'm a little surprised they didn't do that um, a year or two after um, Prince died. The, the only one thing I, I see, I just can't see ever happening, though, uh, you've got uh, Purple Rain performed by or with Sinead O'Connor. I just don't see her. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's a... <laughs> another underrated no, you're person. You're probably right. Yeah, a massively underrated musician, though, uh, Sinead O'Connor. I know a lot of people think that she only had the one hit, which technically is true. But some of her some of her work before uh, Nothing Compares to You is brilliant, and I certainly I'd like to encourage people to check that out. What was that album? I think The Lion and the Cobra. I could be off on the album. Totally. Title. I yeah. mean. Um... Okay, yeah, for the purposes of this, let's get some other Prince Protégé uh, to perform it. Oh, well, you won't, no, Vanity's dead. Uh, they could dust off Apollonia from whatever Botox she's using right now. I'm just assuming yeah, she's totally. using Botox. I'm, 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 I'm done with that. <laughs> Why not? And Mariah Carey, uh, which the induction of Whitney Houston has just propelled her to a possibility. Because I didn't think either of them mm -hmm. were ever going to get in, and both of them have a case. Uh, Whitney's already in, so I shouldn't say half a case because she's already there. Mariah, if you've got Whitney in, you've got to have Mariah in. And inducted by yeah, Shanti, yeah. I love um, that. Yeah, I mean, there's always been um, this kind of uh, minor minor strand of, of global music in Mariah Carey's um, music, and I think Ashanti would be a, a good pick to accentuate that. Um it's tough because Houston, uh, again, remained relevant partly through dying. She became a tragic figure. Whereas um, Mariah, God love her, gets hauled out to, to make a shambles of, of Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve uh, multiple years in a row. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Mariah sold out. She sold out to uh, Hostess, uh, Lay's Potato Chips, uh, alcohol, whatever else. Or what, what? Yeah, I mean... Uh, but it doesn't take away from the fact that that was probably the owner of the top five singing voices ever. Mm -hmm. Totally. And if you look at sustained success, if you look at how her uh, melisma um, influenced pop singing uh, for an entire generation now afterward, uh, carries in. I mean, Mariah's writ written, I think, more number one hits than anyone uh, or co-written more number one hits than anyone not named John Lennon or Paul McCartney. Uh, for that alone, um, uh, I think she deserves some pretty serious consideration. Right. And, and a lot of people aren't aware of, of how much of a songwriter that she is, because you just think of her as some, someone fabricated. Mm -hmm. And granted, her image was fabricated for the longest time by uh, Tommy Mottola, but still, I mean, like, this is a very talented woman. Uh, I guess who wouldn't be inducting her would be, oh, who is she feuding with now? I should know this. She's been feuding with the, the J, is it J Lo? No, I don't even know. Um. Oh, yeah. I, I, I honestly have no idea. Yeah, I, I'm not really big on my TMZ moments, but oh well. <laughs> uh, so moving on, we're 2024, and that's where I, I know that you're not sort of thinking this is going to happen, but you would love to see it happen. Uh, that's sort of like where you're kind of going off uh, your your prediction of who will get in. Or who you think they're going to pick? You're just going to you're just having a bit of fun with that. You've got the ceremony in Liverpool, England, and how <laughs> awesome would that be? I know that would be incredible. Uh, I mean, um, I, I visited Liverpool, um, I think, 18 years ago now, and it felt like a holy place when I was there. Uh, I'd love to see the ceremony um, go to uh, the British Isles. And so musical excellence, you've got Todd Rundgren, because that's, I think, the only way he's going to get in. I keep predicting that that's how he's going to get in every time I do a prediction show. And th that he's going to be nominated, mm -hmm. and he's going to get in through that that back door, which I hate calling it a back door. But mm -hmm. he definitely er he's definitely earned it. And if, the, his, if you look at overall body of work of everything in terms of music, he should have been in a long time ago. Yeah, and I love that the musical excellence category exists because someone like Ron Grin is a natural fit for it. He's mm -hmm. a very good performer, but his work as a producer, um, he's been in a number of different bands that individually wouldn't have a case like Naz or Utopia, but collectively, 
um, he's the whole package. So musical excellence would be just a, a, a natural fit for Rundgren. Mm-hmm. So Judas Priest, and I love this, inducted by Spinal Tap. And what? And again, that's perfect. I mean, why not? Yeah, three three great comedic actors who took probably like something that should never have been a hit, or did be, it wasn't really a hit at the time. It began, just this cult hit, a phenomenon, really. And I love it. I love I love everything about that. And it would be it would be television gold. Oh yeah, I mean the the, the potential for comedy is is great there. And Judas Priest has. Uh, uh, a very forbearing attitude towards Spinal Tap. They get the joke, um, mm-hmm. uh, and they appreciate its, its satirical take on uh, British heavy metal of its day. So Bob Geldof uh, with the Air... I always say his name wrong. Air to get a reward. Inducted by Bono, which makes mm-hmm. perfect sense. Uh, two of the biggest music, musical philanthropists of our time, if not ever. Uh, Oasis inducted mm-hmm. by... <laughs> Various non Gallagher members show up. Nobody performs. Everybody gets a bad taste in their mouth. <laughs> I mean, can, can you imagine an Oasis ceremony that isn't um, a, a total train wreck? Uh, I, I can't. I'm an imaginative guy, and there is no way that this ends well. So uh, it may be like just just a, a, a more uh, a greater show sh- than, than than Radiohead. Uh, when they got inducted. More yes. acrimony. Yeah. I love that. I love how they also like waited that one year because Radiohead said, well, we can't possibly attend. We're performing in, was it Brazil or Argentina? Somewhere in South America. And then, okay, so they, mm-hmm. they, they gave that that wait. No, nah, I can't go. So I got something going on in France. Because <laughs> what is this composition? was Yeah, being yeah, yeah. So. Exactly. Oh, right, right. Um, And he's like uh, with Tom York. He's one of those guys when he says, "I really don't give a shit about it." I believe him. <clears throat> no, totally. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it was fascinating because it underscored um, this general um, English indifference to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Brits um, are at best good sports about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but at, at, at worst, deeply, deeply, deeply indifferent to it. Britain doesn't really do halls of fame, um, I, I found. And radio heads, I mean, occasionally you'll get someone like the zombies who are just over the moon and delighted to be part of the proceedings, but on the other end of the spectrum, you have radio head just, um, you know, sending, uh, you know, sending the, um, the B team <laughs> to accept the award. <laughs> I like that. What do you think was a bit like the ultimate B team ever sent? Uh, I'm thinking of when Van Halen got in, and it was Michael <clears> Anthony <throat> and Sammy Hagar, two of the people who were kicked out of the band. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. I can't think of uh, another uh, parallel quite like that. But I think the only thing that would have made it worse if only Wolfgang uh, showed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Coldplay inducted by Bruno uh, Bruno Mars. I, I read ahead. Uh, Cold Coldplay inducted by Brian Eno. Good fit. I like that. Uh, Commodores <laughs> inducted by Bruno Mars. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'd love to see the last few big '70s R&B acts get in. Um, I'm a big advocate for the Spinners, um, um, the Commodores. I mean, uh, I'd love to see Lionel Richie get in some way or another um and the commodores which which tend to get pigeonholed for something like three times a lady but were a a, a very capable funk group uh, in their day uh love to see him get in bruno mars uh, would be a fine inductor uptown funk is uh certainly a love letter to someone like michael jackson but there's a lot of commodores influence as well mm-hmm. uh the monkeys inducted by rivers cuomo uh, do you think we'll ever see the monkeys ever get in? Because there's the rock establishment. It's it's almost like they still haven't forgiven them for be- becoming created in a non traditional way. Exactly, and um, I'd like to believe that it's possible. It should have happened while all four monkeys were still alive. Um, we we lost 
uh, who I think at least were the two most appealing members of the band in, uh, in Davey and, and, and Peter Tor. Um, but uh, as, as, as we continue on, uh, baby boomers will eventually, I think, get slowly called from the committee or Gen Xers will have a greater say. And they're, I think, more inclined to view the monkeys more charitably from MTV reruns and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Um, so it may never happen, but it, uh, I certainly think there's a case for them. And uh, it's certainly within the, the bounds of possibility. Yeah, and and, I, and uh, what the, you've got even the set here. Listen to the band Pleasant Valley Sunday, Daydream Believer with Rivers Cuomo uh, performing. I'm a believer with Mickey, Mike, and Smash Mouth. Which again, that's the only way they're going to get in there too. But why not? Well, that's yeah. <laughs> that's probably uh, Destiny's and Child, inducted by Mary w- Mary Wilson. So Beyonce, you you think she has the the best chance of anyone to become the first uh, African American? Uh, female to be inducted twice with Destiny yeah, Child totally. and then as a solo. Um, yeah. Well, I, I say that. I say that. I mean, uh, I guess theoretically Tina Turner uh, could, could beat her to the punch. That's true, um, yes. Although I guess um, since she was inducted as Ike and Tina Turner, which makes sense, they were a good combo, but it's also problematic given that Ike spent much of his adult life tormenting uh, Tina. So uh, for that reason alone, I'd love to see Tina Turner get in on her own. I just wasn't sure that it would uh, happen, but but she, her solo career certainly deserves it. Uh, okay. But yeah, Beyonce, uh, if Tina Turner doesn't beat her to that, um, could very easily be the first. Destiny's Child um, seems like a very plausible candidate, and Beyonce solo is uh, a first-year eligible um, artist, if ever there was one. Mm-hmm. And there's and she still has a lot more left in that tank, too. There's a lot more that she's, oh, yeah. she's definitely going to come up with. Uh, so 2025, you've got the ceremony in Detroit. Uh, finally, the spinners get in. Inducted by yes. Boys to Men. Perfect. Rage Against the Machine, uh, inducted by Wayne Kramer. I, I always wonder if he's... Because with Tom Morello on the committee, it's almost a, it's a double-edged sword. How do you want to induct yes. yourself? Yeah, that's a tough thing, and and we could, we could tie David Grohl uh, next year to that as well. He's also on the committee, um, but there there's um, I mean there was a biography of Jan Wenner that came out just a couple years ago called Sticky Fingers, and what an apt description that is. Uh, even if we look beyond artists in the position of nominating uh, themselves or or um, working to get themselves on the ballot. Um, there's also music industry executives with vested interests. Um, there's, a, there's a certain degree of insider um, influence uh, at work, and I'm not totally sure how you could devise a committee where that wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a tricky issue. It hasn't stopped Rage from being nominated twice before uh, since they're headlining, uh, is it Coachella? Um, yes. Or I think one, one, of, one, one of the three days, I believe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and since they're reuniting, um, I think there's a good chance at the very least they'll show up on the ballot again soon. Oh, and, and getting rid of Nine Inch Nails um, as not, not quite the same uh, genre, but as, as um, more or less a predecessor that was a bit um, you know, too edgy to be more um, mainstream than they were. Yeah, I think Rage is a good chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, musical excellence and... I never actually thought about this, but it would be, again, brilliant. The Whalers, inducted by Ziggy Marley. It, and it's, it's, Absolutely. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense. Uh, Soundgarden, inducted by Ann Wilson of Heart. Uh, and, oh, I love this here. I just, actually, I didn't go through this enough. Uh, so you've got, for, for that, because uh, as we all know, uh, Chris Cornell's passed away. Black Hole Sun performed with Chris Novoselic, uh, I always say that name wrong, and Dave Grohl. How awesome would that be? That would be incredible. Just uh, Nirvana Garden and just bring these two uh, great Seattle bands together. Uh, Erdogan Award, Don Cornelius, induct- inducted by Questlove. I'm talking talk about sort of the YouTube rabbit hole. I've been binging on Top of the Pops performances and Soul Train performances. If I'm, like just le- uh, Just beautiful. letting them all go through whatever sort of like is playing next and just running with it. 
but I'm missing, I'm oh, missing yeah. his intro. I, mean, uh, I love it. Um, yeah, I, I, there's, there's great, great footage of the spinners doing uh, one of my favorite songs uh, by any artist, Rubber Band Man, <laughs> strangely <laughs> enough. Um, on, I, I forget if it was Soul Train or, or Midnight Special, but they are just tearing it up. It's wonderful. And here's another great, great <laughs> laughing again just reading this. The Smiths, in, inducted by Jarvis Cocker. Members do not show up due to acrimony. Morrissey sends in a blurry, deeply confusing video from the bunker he shares with Edward Snowden in Argentina's Czech embassy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like Oasis, there is no way that this will not be a shamble. Um, I can't imagine any possible Smith's uh, induction in this or any other universe that isn't... Um, filled with, with, with just weirdness. It doesn't even begin to cover it. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, it'll, it'll be entertaining at the very least. <laughs> Definitely. Cindy Lauper, another massively under, underrated performer, uh, inducted by Tegan and Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, makes, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Jimmy Buffett, that one I, I, I have a hard time picturing, though. Uh, inducted by Timothy it's, B. It's Schmidt. True. It does not yeah. intuitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Buffett is better connected to the industry than he might appear. And, and Buffett gets a bad reputation because um, his fans are mostly, you know, 60-year-old human resources workers on a vendor and, um, uh, you know, wearing Hawaiian shirts and going fins to the left, fins to the right. Uh, he has a cult following. Uh, I'm inclined to view him more charitably as one of the better storytellers of his generation. Um, but if we're, if we're going down um, kind of classic 70s singer-songwriters, I think there's a case uh, certainly for Buffett. And in terms of attracting HBO viewers, um, you get a built-in legion of, of fans. That, I mean, Buffett's still one of the biggest grossing touring artists um, each year, and that's doing relatively limited tours um, in only maybe 20 arenas that he really likes. And, you know, that's sort of the thing that you have to separate sometimes, and I, I'm bad at this, separating the artist or the team from their fans. Totally. Yeah, okay. certain groups, I hate to say I have fans that uh, drive me up a wall, um, and, and Buffett fans kind of leave a bad reputation sometimes. Yeah, Toronto Maple Leaf fans, I'm looking at you. Uh, 2026, we're moving it to San Francisco. Uh Another brilliant city city selection. Sadly, that probably won't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but your list, you've got Smashing Pumpkins, which I, I, I can see them getting in at the, around that time. I think that's sort of that uh, that that that's that length of time they want to make them wait. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's always a bit dicey, isn't it? Um, because you have, you have um, acrimony with their original bass player. Um, uh, oh, uh, Billy Corgan um, has alienated as many people as he's collaborated with. It, it, it's a bit dicey, but I'm sure they'll get in uh, in a handful of years. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic, and I want to sort of talk, talk about him a little bit. He's somebody who I've never put on my list, uh, on the main, not, not in Hall of Fame, uh, core list. And I get a lot of people emailing why. And I think I'm sort of like turning my whole, my whole uh, thought process around on that. I never really thought of him as a rock icon, and it's not that I wasn't a fan. I remember having a couple, a couple old albums up. And kids, albums are what uh, what people, what artists used to do. They put a compilation of their songs and put it on one giant little <laughs> giant disc, and that you would have to pay, and then you would play that with a needle. Got to feel old, but <laughs> it's. Yeah. I, I did have that Weird Al in 3D. I, I think that was the name of the album, but I, I never, so yeah, I was just uh, saying about, okay. Weird, yeah, Weird Al was somebody who I just, and maybe that's on me, I'm not giving him the proper respect, I think that's going to change in the next uh, revision of that, uh, do you think there is, obviously you think that, that there's a strong possibility, or otherwise you wouldn't have forecast this, what am I missing on Weird Al's, in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there's got to be something I'm, I'm not quite getting. Sure. Um, 
it's a tricky case because it's so much uh, unlike any conventional artist's uh, aspirations to be in the Rock Hall. Uh, because Yankovic's been the clown prince. Uh, he, he poked fun of um, the unfolding story of American popular music for uh, what's bordering on 35 uh, years now. Uh, he's outlasted almost every artist he's poked fun at. Um, and um, I think in the process of that, he's gone from being um, uh, this this uh, jester figure who was difficult to take seriously, uh, I guess, to being part of the fabric, to the point where artists feel uh, almost honored when Weird Al deigns to make fun of one of their songs. Um, it's not a hill I'm necessarily willing uh, to die on. Uh, I think there's you can make a case against it. Uh, but in terms of, of um, longevity and contributing something unique to the rock and roll milieu, um, I think a case kind of emerges from that, that, that kind of murkiness for Weird Al. But, um, but that's just me personally. I mean, I was a big Weird Al fan as a teenager. How could you not be? Um, <laughs> so it, it may be influencing my judgment. That's, that's why we always have these these discussions because that's how we learn uh foreigner inducted by duncan cheek i i i can i can foresee that that's a sort of uh, as i'm looking here that's i guess your first arena band that we've discussed yes. yeah yeah i might be a little bit down on arena bands um just i mean i wasn't i wasn't totally convinced that death leopard had the strongest case for example but uh the voters uh, overrode me on that uh, I mean, Foreigner, they've certainly got a lot of industry love. Uh, Jan Winner's role in the Rock Hall is more limited now, but he's been pulling for Foreigner. Uh, allegedly, Ahmet Erdogan suggested Foreigner, and everyone else in the room just looked at him like he farted, <laughs> and no one ever brought it up again. But, um, but if we're looking at big 80s bands, big arena bands, um, you know, being of a time and place uh, like Journey or, or on the harder end, uh, Def Leppard, there's a case for Foreigner. And again, nostalgia is influencing um, my uh, judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen Latifah, inducted by Lauren Hill. And for me, Queen Latifah, she, I think a lot more important than she was necessarily talented, if that makes any sense. Because she was the first, sure. one of the first uh, big name female rappers. And she was good, but she didn't necessarily leave behind that much of a body of work as she transcended into a very mm -hmm. successful acting career. Yeah, totally. No, I would largely agree with that assessment. Um, uh, part of it is that there has to be a first um, hip hop woman inducted in the rock hall. Uh, on the merits, I think Lauren Hill has a stronger case. I think Mary J. Blige has a stronger mm -hmm. case. Uh, I just have a difficult time seeing them get in. Uh, sometimes personality um, and charisma uh, might trump the, uh, the body of work left behind. So in that sense, I, I would have a, an easier time seeing Queen Latifah get in first. But, but, but I think your criticisms are, are well warranted. Mm -hmm. and, I, and she still remains a viable name. And there's no reason to think that she won't be. And we were looking at 2026. So mm -hmm. why not? Uh, Motley Crue, oh, yep. <laughs> okay. inducted by Brett Michaels. Motley Crue by 2025 had perished on a reunion tour when Nikki Six lights up a fat one as the band visited an oxygen bar in Copenhagen. In lieu of a performance, everyone in the audience is given a lighter and a certified pre-owned hypodermic needle. <laughs> sure. How could it go any other way? Um, so, uh, yeah, again, I am not the biggest fan of... of of uh, Motley Crue, uh, for better or worse. Um, so I, I, I wrote another absurd scenario that prevents them from actually showing up to accept the award. <laughs> I think we were talking about uh, in the event of a nuclear holocaust, we're, we're also forgetting uh, Mick Mars. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Uh, Beck, inducted by Thurston Moore. This is someone I've, I'm shocked he hasn't even been nominated yet. I know he's only been eligible for two years, but he oh, ticks all of those boxes that they love. Successful. The critics love him. Mm -hmm. uh, still putting out music today. How has he not been nominated yet? I know. Um, and that's, that's so fascinating because 
Um, I, I think if you were to ask most people on the committee, um, they'd say, yeah, yeah, Beck is very deserving. But you need more than that. You need that one person to advocate for you on the committee and, you know, out of their two or three choices every year, bring your name forward. And it just seems like Beck hasn't found that advocate yet. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, also what you've done here, because uh, there's two other possible inductions for or forecasting for 2026. Influence, not as an artist, but inducted as an influence, and that might be the only way this happens. Craft work, because clearly mm -hmm. the nominated committee wants them in. They're I believe it's been six times they've been nominated three of the last four years, or maybe it's the last three years. I might be off on that. I should have uh, looked that up before. But anyone who understands the history of music, even if you don't like what they did, you cannot ignore craft work. It's impossible. And I always sort of like say that they should be inducted. I will pound that until I'm dead. But I also know that I'm advocating for a group that probably could not care in the least probably even less than some of the British artists. Oh, no. And, and I've always sort of joked, you could, put, no, I mean, yeah, you could put any four of my German uncles in one of those suits and they just and have them accept the award, <laughs> and no one would know. No one would know. It would be a, the perfect cover-up. Um, but, yeah, Kraftwerk is so incredibly influential. Some people have said that uh, if you look at the most influential artists um, in, in, in popular music, in the last half of the 20th century, Beatles are number one, Kraftwerk is number two. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would go that far, but they, uh, in terms of what they did with electronic music, in terms of um, experimentation, uh, viewing, um, viewing technology not as a gimmick, but as a, as a medium of expression, uh, yeah, Kraftwerk could not be more deserving. And that's a perfect segue because you've got Shaka Khan winning the Musical Excellence Award. Same exact <laughs> scenario. Uh, they're going to keep inducting her. Yeah. And I get why she can't get through. Shaka Khan, when they tried it as a solo, tried it with Rufus. It's someone who is massively talented. Mm -hmm. However, is she always going to be fall under that top five or top six? Because it, it also changes in any kind of group that they put together. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy for her to fall through the cracks. And I can just see them sort of giving up. And I guess that's what so we've done here. Like, and like they did with Niall Rogers, because they, they, they're looking like he belongs. But okay, Sheik as a whole, eh, like what was it, 11 times they were nominated? I think it was, uh, yeah, it was 11. Yeah. I think so. So, I mean, this is a, that's probably how they're going to get her in, because they, they've tried it both ways, and it's just not happening. She'll be a finalist again, and she's going to fail again. And I think I, I see what you see what you're probably mm -hmm. prognosticating here. They're just saying like, screw it, we want her in, and this is how it should be. Right, and and that may be the only way uh, to do it. It's it's not ideal, um, but um, I don't see an alternative. I mean, we have to get Niall Rogers in somewhere, and if the voters wouldn't have it for whatever reason, uh, there needed to be a workaround. So mm -hmm. I'm for that reason alone, I'm glad that the musical excellence category works as, as a, uh, an avenue of last resort. Mm -hmm. So for 2027, uh, the last one you did, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. that, that would be incredible. Uh, one, one of those great bands that a lot of people in North America just don't know who they are. And they should. Uh, no Doubt, mm -hmm. inducted by Moby. Uh, Missy Elliott, and she definitely belongs. If if it's a fight to get Queen Latifah in, totally. Missy Elliott sort of like broke down so many of those other barriers for a lot of other women. Just because where, what she was able to do that Queen Latifah wasn't able to do was become a massive commercial success as a rapper. <laughs> and did so without yeah, really Elliott selling broke out. Down. Yeah. And also, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say also, induct, you had her inducted by Little Kim, which might be the only way she would sort of like get in there too. If that's that's providing, <laughs> of course, you could just the way she's sort of morphing. You could just send a like a white midget. That might work. <laughs> Useless fact here: uh, Little Kim was actually when I was flying in, she was flying out. Uh, the, ho the hotel that my wife works at, uh, they were filming. Uh, she was here along with Maya and someone else. I forget. Apparently, they're doing they're filming some kind of reality show. 
Because, you know, that's wow. what, yeah, that's really what we need is a little Kim reality <laughs> show. Which I'd watch. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Uh, White, yeah. I would. I, I would. Uh, White Stripes, they tick all the boxes for sure. Early Influence, Patsy Klein. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Uh, Phil Collins. Totally. And, yeah, Phil Collins inducted by Phil, Philip Bailey. Uh, and I like how you have sort of in the set, uh, Easy Lover, probably my favorite Phil Collins song ever. Actually, no, that's not true. It would be In the Air Tonight. <clears throat> how can it not be? It's always In the Air Tonight and then Easy Lover right after. And one here I, I, want, I want to sort of like get, you, get your, your take on more. And, and I'm probably not giving her the proper respect, and I really should. Uh, Gloria Estefan. And I, I guess maybe <clears throat> as sort of a talk about Weird Al's to uh, coin a phrase from one of his songs, White and Nerdy, that's what I am. I could never get into mm-hmm. her music. I, I I don't want to say that I don't get it. It's It just doesn't appeal to me. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's, that's okay. I mean, there's a lot of music that doesn't, but I've always sort of respected the artist, the workmanship, everything that she sort of brought to the table. Mm-hmm. And her, not just the dedication of her fan base, but... She's one of those people when she says she loves the, her fans, I believe her. Mm-hmm. Totally. And um, I'd love to see a, a choice um, in, in that vein. Um, I, I can't name any names um, yet, but uh, I'm, I'm working on a book on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have talked to a couple people who are on the nominating committee. Um, and um, one of the things that they expressed to me was their desire to see Latin influences, uh, Caribbean influences, uh, uh, Tejano influences, Norteño influences um, show up in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, Estefan would be, uh, I I think, a great, great choice um, in that vein because Latin sounds have had a profound influence on uh, a number of different rock and roll artists, and uh, Estefan was a big part of that. It did give us the Macarena. Uh, (laughs) That's true. That's true. Well, no one's perfect. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Number one hit. Yeah, one of the the blogs that I've sort of written were the worst songs of all time. I think I had that as number three. Uh, So this is what you're you're predicting. What I want to know is what is your dream lineup for the the 2021 class? What does Alex want to see? Okay, uh, if I had my druthers, um, I would love to see Kraftwerk, um, just for their massive influence. Um, I'd love to see uh, Spinners, a band that should have been in decades ago. I mean, if the OJs got in in 2005, for pity's sake, mm-hmm. how, are, how are the Spinners not in? Um, I'd love to see Carol King, uh, just incredibly influential singer, songwriter, uh, one of my favorite musicians. Um, I'd love to see someone from, uh, and, and the lack of women on the committee uh, may have an influence on, on this uh, not playing out. I'd love to see someone from, I guess, the Lilith Fair scene, um, which was such a big part of the 90s uh, musical tapestry, uh, get in. So someone like the Indigo Girls um, or, or Tori Amos or somebody in that, uh, that uh, little niche get in. Um, trying to think who else I'd love to see. Uh, I'd love to see some more. Um, you know what? Let me just go to my own blog <laughs> and, and see who I've, I've listed you know, and, because and, I, I don't want to leave out anybody. And while um, you're doing that, uh, can you, uh, uh, promote it if you can. Where, where can people see your writing? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, I have a blog called the Northumbrian Countdown. Um, so northumbriancountdown.wordpress.com. It's not a very sophisticated site. Uh, it's a free WordPress site that I, I came up with in grad school to let me write and make lists um, and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I do rock hall commentary. Occasionally I'll delve into politics. Occasionally I'll go into something else like NBA history or Disney World, uh, two of my other big hobbies. Um, so it may not be everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I hope they'll check it out. And I'm sorry, I definitely want to encourage that. And so, so you were looking at uh, who who is your other artist that you would have uh, for your dream okay. ceremony? Yeah. 
Rounding it out, um, I definitely pick the Eurythmics. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie Lennox is a, a fantastic soul singer and found a way to, to square that circle to make New Wave, which had at its worst, uh, I guess, kind of a sterile feel and infusing it with, with soul and depth of feeling. Uh, and maybe uh, I'd, I'd round things out with um, someone who's maybe more influential than good, <laughs> necessarily. Uh, and that would be Brian Eno. I think his solo mm -hmm. career warrants uh, a serious look. And I, I like where you sort of use that word influence, because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame really only has two rules, which they've broken a couple times. Uh, the first being that it's got to be an artist 25 years after their first uh, album comes out. Uh, and they, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're referring to where they broke that. That's with Smokey Robinson when they inducted him as a solo, which... Right. I mean, they finally got that right 20 years after, or was it longer, when, when they put in the rest of the miracles, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, but uh, when they got the rest of the miracles. Yeah, I, that, yeah, I'm just, I'm already, I'm already having like mental gymnastics in my head about how angry I was about that. Now it's all coming back. Oh, well. And the second is mm -hmm. that a band has to be, influ they, they cite influence, and if, Again, that's so subjective, but if you're gonna ha gonna use that on your site as to what why someone's in or out, then at least go by that, defend it. Why was such such a group influential? Sure, and and that that leads us into some interesting um, places. Oh, if I can add, maybe I, I don't know what number I'm on, but maybe something like seven. Um, I'd throw in a tribe called Quest mm -hmm. uh, just because. If it's my dream, uh, they're never going to get in uh, any other way. Um, and I love that uh, Native Tongues kind of um, corner of the hip-hop world. Um, but yeah, it, it's difficult. And uh, I, I'm inclined to, to, to show a little bit of sympathy for the devil, uh, as it were, um, just because uh, there's a certain sense of making this up as you go along. And, and to be sure, lots of people in the Rock Hall have, have played favorites or... Um, or I think of something like Phil Spector using his influence to keep the Ronettes out for many years. Um, but at, its, at, at my most charitable, uh, I guess, I'm inclined to see uh, this as an unfolding process. If you look at those first two classes, um, it's almost all individuals that got in. It's not even clear that they were planning on inducting groups at that early stage those first two years. There's the Everly Brothers, but you could also read it as two distinct individuals. It obviously refers to Phil and Don Everly. Um, out of those first two years, I think only the Coasters are, are a distinct group. So I don't think inducting ensembles was on their radar the first two years. But I could be I could be mistaken. I'm just I'm just making an educated guess. Well, you pro you, there's probably something to that. I mean, it still seems like everything is a work in progress. There's a certain lack of transparency and that's frustrating. But then at the same time in the social media age, maybe you don't want to be very transparent because we've certainly seen it with uh, <clears throat> the baseball hall of fame, which at least uh, I'll give mad props to every one of those writers who will make their, make their uh, ballot pu uh, public. They don't have to. And they do <laughs> And they do it anyway, knowing right. that they are going to get blasted for whatever they chose or didn't choose. So, you know, I, I get it more and more, especially as uh, my site becomes more popular. I've been referred to as an idiot on occasion <laughs> for oh, certain no. rankings. And that, that's, that's just my first wife. But I'm bummed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not all gems, but I try. <laughs> so when, <clears throat> when the book is uh, ready, uh, I'd love to have you back to promote it. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a while. I can't do much research here in Singapore. Uh, my wife and I uh, had a baby uh, back in July. Congratulations. So, uh, other things are, are uh, oh, thank you so much. Other things are on the docket. Um, but I'm, I'm going to keep plugging away at it. I'm going to keep trying to get um, interviews for it. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get an interview with the zombies, uh, so that'll be very fun. Um, but... Um, but yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what, what what shape it ends up taking. Yeah, and uh, we'll de we'll definitely do our part to uh, promote that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Kirk. I really appreciate uh, the interview, and uh, I love what you're doing.